Hello, thanks for joining us here at yourlocalnote.com. We have another vidcast. We are featuring Skinny Cool Kid. We'll be talking with him in just a couple minutes, but just want to remind you that we are streaming 24-7, nothing but the best of Philadelphia area musicians on our site 24-7. And we've got free apps, so you can take yourlocalnote.com with you anywhere you go. Just go to the respective stores, type in YLN, download it for free. Remember, when it has to do with Philadelphia area music, your localnote.com is where you can find out all about it okay right now let's get to uh, the first song that we're going to play this evening it's from skinny cool kid the song is called my kind of barbecue on your localnote.com And so I'm scrubbing the grill Because you know I can't help it We're doing chicken and steak And maybe ribs and a brisket I'm gonna crack a cold case And all my friends gonna visit Because it's my kind, it's my kind, it's my kind of barbecue You know it's my kind, it's my kind, it's my kind of barbecue In addition to sipping We got some cups that need flipping And we're wishing we could always be dismissing the kitchen I'm on a mission with but I also lather it up Go get them sweet baby Ray You know they can't get enough Because it's my kind, it's my kind It's my kind of barbecue You know it's my kind, it's my kind It's my kind of barbecue That's right, it's my kind, it's my kind It's my kind of barbecue You know it's my kind, it's my kind It's my kind of barbecue With brushes until it's luscious And even hammer can't touch this Or do my recipes justice I confess I leave the lid open Cause you know that I'm hoping That all my neighbors come looking At all the grub that I'm cooking It's my kind, it's my kind It's my kind of barbecue You know it's my kind, it's my kind It's my kind of barbecue That's right, it's my kind, it's my kind It's my kind of barbecue You know it's my kind, it's my kind It's my kind of barbecue
The song is called My Kind of Barbecue off the EP called My Kind of Barbecue. It's the Skinny Cool Kid on yourlocalnote.com. Skinny Cool Kid, welcome to yourlocalnote.com. Thanks for having me down here, RJ. I really appreciate it. Appreciate you joining us, giving us some time on a on a night that could be uh, a little tricky out there with the weather. So yep. uh, if you're going to be driving later, please be careful. Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's talk about this song first. And we'll talk about how you got into music, and then we'll go back uh, to your songwriting. But uh, my kind of barbecue. What's the thought behind this? I, I think I understand what it what it well, means. Yeah, but... it's pretty on the nose as far as what it's about. <laughs> but um, it was my attempt at a pop song. I wanted to do something fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've tended to gravitate toward, toward you know the the acoustic, right, semi melancholy sort of stuff. So right. it's like, well, I'm gonna see if I can do a fun one, right, that can get people moving. So. I, I think you accomplished it. I mean, I, I I think it's a fun song. It sounds good, uh, and it's just uh, you know. Now, is the whole EP like that? Did you take that sort of tact um, with it, or no? With that EP, I wanted to kind of make it a compilation album. Okay, it being a barbecue with different different sorts of flavors and, and gotcha. styles. That, that was my excuse for having <laughs> having a mix mix album. So I was like, yeah. yeah but you know what? You you you, you tied it together. Even yeah, though I hope there's, so. well, even yeah. though the songs don't really go it's a together. Theme. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, so I so I just want to kind of pick what I what I was feeling at the time mm-hmm. uh, when we were in the studio. So I picked five. Um, so it's a little sample. Okay. And you've you've released two EPs so far, yes. one, in, one in 2013 and one uh, near the end of last year, uh, yeah. and we're going to be playing songs from both. Um, are you, um, let's, uh, before we get into that, let's talk about how you got into music and, and why you picked the name Skinny Cool Kid. Right, well, um, I started, I didn't learn guitar until my senior year of college. Oh, really? So I still consider myself relatively, right. relatively new. I had a few friends who play guitar. Right. And... I just wanted to learn one Ben Harper song and that, was- that I'd heard. I was like, just teach me this one song, I'll be good. And um, so my friends taught me how to play. I spent a few hours that night. And then you got hooked. And I, that was it. That was it. Yeah, it just kind of hooked me when you're able to play it and you're like, oh, that's people actually play music and can actually do this with an instrument. So so they um, taught you and then did you just continue teaching yourself after that? Yep, I got a guitar a month or two later and pretty much, yeah, you know, picked up a few things from my friends in college and a couple friends after I graduated who also played uh-huh. and it just kind of snowballed Okay, and kind of taught myself since then. All right. When did you get into songwriting then? Uh, I mean, maybe a couple years Later, I was like, yeah, I'm going to try and write a song. I never really thought about it. <laughs> okay. I'd always enjoyed writing right, uh, and different creative outlets. Um, so you didn't go to college for music? Uh, no, I was in college for screenwriting. Oh, okay. Actually, which I also okay, pursue. So, so writing is, is something you like to do. Yes, but I, I found music to be much more immediately gratifying. Right, sure. Sure, yeah, it's writing a, a screenplay is... <laughs> a little longer of a process. Yes, yeah, a little bit. Having to rely on other people to make it and all that sort of stuff. Okay, but there's so. still there's still an outlet for you. Yes. So is it safe to say your songwriting then, um, there's stories to your songwriting? And, and, and not it's not something where it, you've got to live the experience because some songwriters will, will tell us if, if I'm if I haven't lived this experience, I can't write about it. I mean, I think that's true for some of the songs that I've written. They're from an absolutely you know direct experience that I'm uh, you know, processing somehow through a song. Mm-hmm. Uh, would I have to live it? Not necessarily, I don't think. But okay. I think I, I, I'd have to find an attachment to to part of the story that I can kind of personalize. Okay, I got it. Um, now, uh, some of the friends that have taught you in college, are they still playing? Or? I have a couple friends out in L.A. who've done the band thing for a while. I think they put out, they put out an EP. Okay. Um, I think I'm hoping they're getting getting back into it. Okay. Uh, Do you send them some of your stuff to listen to? Uh, yep, they've been they've been supportive. Oh, good. And I'm hoping to get back out there and hopefully okay, hopefully join up with them or do a show with them at some point. Okay, just to not permanently, just to to visit and hang out. Well, for a little that bit. depends on the screenplay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you got to so this is a twofold trip. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, hopefully. You got to sc- hopefully I'll you, be out there for some reason. You got a screenplay that you're ready to to. Uh, I'm working on one right, right now. Yeah. Uh, Nice. Yeah, latest one. So I'm trying so, to. So you you so will you write some music and then and then decide? Well, let me work on the screenplay. You go back and forth. That's kind of how. That's kind of how it's been. I my kind of barbecue. We started that in like April or May, 
and you know our sessions in the studio were sometimes spaced out a week or two mm-hmm. uh, so it kind of took you know it took all summer we finished it by the end of August and then we had the CD release party that we're planning for and it's right. there's a lot yes. a lot that goes into it sure um, so I did write my screenplay last year every day for two months okay during the winter and then I put it aside okay so now I'm back to to doing the full, screenplay full time getting that done now do you, I, I mean that's that's quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of or I should say that's quite an experience in itself you ever think about trying to combine the two write a song about screenwriting a song about screenwriting uh, maybe some screenwriting ideas about about a musician or okay, there we go. Or, or songs or singing, yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, any way to combine the two would be would be great. Now, do you um, do you have a set of musicians that you uh, play with, or do you do uh, do you do most of the stuff yourself? Well, on the albums, yeah. uh, I've been fortunate enough to meet up with Chris Cotter, who is the producer at Tribe Sound Records mm-hmm. and he's the drummer of Wave Radio okay. another local band out of Westchester right right so his bandmates James McLaughlin and Colin McGettrick okay. uh, play on both the albums okay. and then on My Kind of Barbecue a few other people um, join me for that one okay also do they um, do you have someone I mean because the, the one thing about being part of a band that we find is that you know the band helps out writing the song putting songs together so, solo artists the now the the benefit of being a so, solo artist, you make all the decisions. Right. The minus is there. There are times where I'm sure you run into uh, maybe a writer's block, or you're looking for something. Where do you do you go, turn to someone and say, "Hey, check this out. What do you think?" It's a good question. Um, I do have a friend Jack who I've been kind of jamming with. He plays drums. I'm hoping to get together with a couple couple other people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd say the main impediment of being by yourself is that you're not. You're not getting into the groove of a band right. sound. Right. And I've tried to, for the next songs that I'm working on, I'm trying to focus more on the percussion aspect. Okay. Of The full aspect of well, the song. Well, trying to, trying to have a solid solid beat to, to lay the song on instead of working backwards, mm-hmm. um, I feel like could could maybe work better. When, when you say working backwards, what, what do you mean by that? Well, instead of just starting with... Starting with the music, you know, I write most of them on a, an acoustic guitar. Mm-hmm. Um, starting with that, so you start, and, that, and then all figure, your songs, figuring out what the tempo is. Okay, all your songs start with music, and then you match up words later. I would say typically, uh, but I, I mean, I have a bunch of different ways that I write songs. Okay, so that I try not to encounter any writer's block. Right, right. So I try to not limit myself to any any method it might happen sometimes like I had the my kind of barbecue hook mm-hmm. for a while I knew okay. I wanted to do a summer song sure what do I like doing I like barbecuing there you go um, so I thought my kind of barbecue could be a good hook and that kind of worked from there did you have the music set for that or did did you just write some stuff with the, the, the lyrics first and then tried to match it up I'm trying to think of how I started that I mean it's very it's very simple chord progression so mm-hmm. there's not much not much to it the musicians I play with add, added a lot okay um to it um it's kind of it's kind of a process of going back and forth okay and feeling feeling it out so some days you're you're just uh, uh jamming on the guitar and coming up with riffs mm-hmm. setting them aside mm-hmm. and then some days you're just writing is that yeah. how, is that basically how it works yeah pretty much and then you you then mix and match from there yeah yeah okay but typically i would say it starts with the guitar Okay. With with the chords. Very cool. All right, then what we're going to do now is we'll go to song number two. And this is off. Is uh, No Risk your um, first EP? Yes. Okay. And it is the title track of your first EP from this from Skinny Cool Kid. We're going to play this song, and then we'll come back. We'll talk about it. And we'll talk about uh, uh, the, the process of recording the EPs and how that went for you. Uh, again, we're just hanging with uh, Skinny Cool Kid on yourlocalnote.com. And the song is called No Risk from the EP, No Risk. Tyrell Walker may fall to his death But the view from up there already took his breath He said, I'm gonna do whatever makes me feel alive It might kill me in the end But that's alright, cause no risk No reward You'll never find out what's in store If you keep walking on these Feeling the waves on his way 
beach, a soldier knew of one thing They could not reach, this is for freedom Not for me, but for you They might put me down But I'm gonna do what I gotta do Cause no risk No reward You'll never find out What's in store if you're too afraid to storm your Just continue on without Cause no risk No reward You'll never find out What's in store if you keep one man Watch your heart is full It's a cosmic dream of the epic kind It's a storybook we can't leave behind It's a photograph of what We might have is a simple man that's within our grasp with no risk, no reward. You never find out what's in store if you wonder what your heart is for. That's the title track from Skinny Cool Kid's uh, first EP, No Risk. Um, before we get to the song, I, I, I meant to ask you before, Skinny Cool Kid, how'd you come up with that? I've been asked that a lot, so okay. I've been trying to formulate a good response. <laughs> um, so, I mean, are, are, I mean you're, you're relatively skinny. Not well, like me. I'm a fat guy. I have one <laughs> s- s- localized uh, spot on me I'm trying to, trying to work on, but uh, it's hard okay. when it's cold out during the winter, man. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Um, absolutely. So, you, you, is, well, this, is this a college name? Name or something um, like that? No, but I was always skinny growing up, right? And it was I was kind of insecure about it. Okay, it was kind of it wasn't it wasn't a good thing. Okay, for, from my from my perspective, <laughs> right, right, growing up. Um, so I guess that takes care of the skinny part. But uh, <laughs> uh, but no, just kind of you know taking taking that feeling of being insecure about sure. that sort of thing. Okay, and trying to flip it around. Got it. Um, Got to try to take ownership of it. That's that's my most simple explanation. I, I think it's a good one. Keep, that's a keeper. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No risk. What is this about? Um. Well, let's see. What is that about? It's two years old now. This yeah. Song. Um. I mean, it's just about you know being being able to take certain chances mm-hmm. you know if, if you want certain things and then you're not gonna you're not gonna necessarily get get the ultimate prize if you're it's a little autobiography sit, sitting then. at home yeah oh uh, yeah that's yeah, because, that's because you're taking a chance as a screenwriter I mean you're, yeah. you, that's a big chance I mean that's uh, yeah. it's competitive yeah. and it's not easy so I, I could see that if you don't take the risk it ain't gonna happen yeah so I mean my faith has always just been in you know just trying to Trying to hone your craft and try to practice, and never thinking that your stuff's amazing, and always being your your biggest critic. Yes, so that you can keep keep working toward it. Yeah, I I find that people who are like that very hard on themselves. Um, my wife is very much like that. I mean, she she called me up a couple of days ago, and she's in radio, and mm-hmm. she had to do something new, and she she and she didn't call me; she texted me. Well, what they wanted me to do, it was a disaster. <laughs> It was an absolute disaster. I said, did, did you get yelled at by your boss? No. Did your coworkers make fun of you? No. Well. Who told you it was a disaster? 
Well, I just know it. Yeah. <laughs> but she's very good at what she does. And, and you right. know, you're good at what you do. Yeah. And you're driven. And that's yeah. very important to, to succeed. And it's a fine line sometimes because on one hand, you know, being hard on yourself can, can make you strive to do some something really good. And then drive your spouse crazy. And then drive, <laughs> and then, yeah, then drive your spouse crazy. Um, the <laughs> um, but at some point, you know, you need, you need to think that it's it's good enough yeah. to share. Well, yeah, that and not, is. And not be worried about and, and, any and, criticism or anything like that. And do you have a go-to person to, to get you to, to, to say, okay, you're good. This is good. This song is good. You can stop. Is that, do you rely on the person who produced your albums uh yeah i mean i would definitely say chris cotter has been a, a big support i mean definitely once we're in the studio um working on things you know i i take his advice and thoughts very seriously and it's it's an ongoing process of bouncing things off of one another mm -hmm. um to try to achieve you know the best sounding thing possible and it's it's a cool feeling when you feel like you finally have it and you look at each other and you're like, yeah, okay, this sounds pretty good. Good. How did you pick Tribe Sound to record your EPs? Um, this was a few years ago at this point. I mean, no more than a few years ago because mm -hmm. No Risk is only a couple years old. But um, I just did a search of local studios and I was living in... So West you didn't know Chris beforehand? No. Okay. Yeah, I was living in Westchester at the time. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, there's a recording studio right on Gay Street. Okay. Where I've been many times, never knew it was there. Okay. And so I just went in, met, met with them, gave them a couple demo things that I've you know recorded in my bedroom mm -hmm. kind of thing. Listened to it, we talked about it, and ended up saying, you know, why not? do five tracks okay so and and obviously you liked working with him um enough that you went with your uh, next ep my kind of barbecue you recorded yep. it with him again yeah i mean i thought the first one went went really well james and colin uh did an awesome job on that first one in, in a matter of just a couple days playing all five songs okay and um i said why you know why go somewhere else? Was your point. was your first EP the first time you were in a recording studio? First time in a real recording studio. Okay. Yes. And I guess we're not counting my bedroom. Right. That's as not an that's, actual you know. <laughs> recording studio. I had a microphone. It's it's uh, the it's the almost recording I don't studio. Know if it takes more than that or not. But, uh, uh, but no, I was impressed with what Chris had. I was like, oh yeah, this is legit. Okay. So, um. So, I mean, it was an, an eye-opening experience for you to go through that process of recording yep. yeah. the first EP. Yeah, I didn't really know what to expect. And some of the songs I picked, I would say, were pretty simple as far as structure, because I didn't, I didn't want to so, you know, go crazy and right. spend a lot of time. Right. And because time is money. Time is money. Yeah, you're right. Um, but it was great. But like I said, you know, what James and Colin brought to it, you know, it gives you the bug of wanting to do it again. Um, so after that experience, were there things that you looked at and said, "Okay, we did this for the first album. I want to. I want to. I mean, for the first EP, I want to try something different." Did you approach the second EP different because of your experience of the, with the first EP? Uh, I was going to say, ironically, I probably took a couple more risks with the second <laughs> album. <laughs> okay. um, one thing that Chris actually did did uh, make me aware of was how I strum. I was never taught had a strumming guitar I, right you know there's strumming patterns yes which i don't really abide by okay when i play don't tell anybody okay but, we won't tell anybody um but he said i have a natural inclination to do like a little swing okay um beat which, okay. which kind of lends itself to like a folk country sound sure um so there's a couple songs in the first one that do have a little bit of a country vibe to them and i think they're great but i did consciously Go wanna, away from that. Want to get away from that um, for, for the second one? Just because you wanted something different, or that's not the vibe you wanted for your music? Um, both. Okay. Yeah, both. I mean, like I said, I think the songs turned out awesome. Right. But I was thinking people are kind of like, oh, it's kind of country. Right. Like, right. I'm like, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a huge country fan. Got it. Uh, so I thought it was kind of funny that, like, okay. oh, people are telling me it's country music. Yeah. And Country's a little popular, though. I just want to let <laughs> yeah. you know. Oh, I know. A few people oh, know no about problem that. With, no, I'm just know, giving, you, I'm giving you a hard time. <laughs> no, yeah. that's, that's good. Uh, but, you know, I, I like all, all different types of music. Well, and yeah. so I guess I do have a fear of being 
pigeonholed into are any, you, any particular Then are you genre. trying to do something different f- for your n- next songs? I mean, you got two EPs out, but you, you're constantly writing. So are you right. looking at different avenues to explore as far as musically? Yes. Um, yeah, like I said, I mean, I've been kind of looking more at getting into, you know, certain types of beats or percussion Okay, that can kind of inform. Okay. How my song set, and I have songs set a that are, tone because I've you know I've experimented with a few different beats with some songs that I've written mm-hmm. and it it just completely changes the character of the song sometimes and right so I think find, finding an appropriate beat and kind of working from there and trying to match match the song that I've written up to that how many songs did you go into you I mean did you just go in with five songs for each EP or did you write a whole bunch of songs and then try to pick and choose and did Chris also help you pick out the songs to go on the EP I had I want to say for each of them I probably had like eight or nine that I was okay. lo- looking at sure um, I mean from a longer list of songs I kind of just broke it down right you know, and then then a couple were kind of hanging around, and you know, I ultimately had to make a decision of what are we going to go with. And, did you and make whatnot. the decision, or did Chris push you, or how did uh, that work? I think that was ultimately my decision. Okay. Um, and you know, that decision is based on a few different things. I think, um, you know, I want to have a, a mixture of you know themes of the song, the style, the content. Um, and things like that. So I've got plenty of songs that, you know, I think might be great on an album, but I think things being too similar or being about the same topic. Right. Not that that's always a bad thing. Right. Because obviously there's albums that are on, you know, the same subject from yeah, different angles, but... Th- there are, and I, I, think, I think for the future of albums, you know, if you're going to come up with a con- concept album, that makes sense, but just to do an album, just to do an album, I think in this day and age, at this point in time, you really, really got to look at that and question it because of, one, the costs, and two... Uh, we're single driven right now. Right. People are, you know, downloading their MP3s and taking it on their phone, and not, and they're picking and choosing. They're not, you know, right. they're 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 playing DJ. They're saying, you know, I like this song, I don't like that song. Right. So I mean, you gotta gotta take everything into consideration. Yeah. So I mean, moving forward, I'm kind of looking at it as every song is is a single. Okay. Um, or it needs to it needs to stand on its own. Um, are you close to getting ready to record another EP? I wouldn't say I'm looking at another EP, but I, I do have some new songs okay. that I've written. I might go in and just record, record that. Maybe record one, okay, or something like that. Put so, that out. Yeah, nice. So I'm still I'm still open. Okay, very cool. Yeah. All right, uh, let's go to uh, song number three that we're going to feature tonight. And again, this is off your first EP, No Risk. This song is called Beyond an Orange Sky. We'll uh, play it, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, we're hanging with uh, Skinny Cool Kid. Hopefully some of his coolness will rub off on me. <laughs> that's that's something I was hoping. That's really the only reason I, the only reason I had him come in, because he's a cool kid. No, I'm just kidding. Skinny Cool Kid, uh, and the EP is uh, No Risk, and the song is called Beyond an Orange Sky on your localnote.com
The song is called Beyond an Orange Sky. It is off the EP No Risk. And uh, the artist, the singer, the songwriter is Skinny Cool Kid. And he's hanging with us tonight, which we're very happy. And uh, let's talk about this song, Beyond an Orange Sky. What is that about? That was one that I wrote. I've had a couple songs that I've written that have just kind of, you know, I've start, start playing my guitar and it just kind of comes out a little bit. Or at okay. least the first few lines. Oh, okay. So uh, playing and, then, and writing, it's coming out at the same time. Yeah. So okay. that was one that just kind of kind of flowed out fairly easily. And I wish that I could say that about every one of them, um, but not the case. So there's really no, it's not one of those things, because sometimes songwriters like to put a song out there and just be like, well, what do you think the song is about? Yeah. Is that sort of what this song is like? Um I would say it's less about something and more of a feeling, a reflection at a certain time. I'm trying to think of what uh, what was going on in my life at that time. I think I might have been relocating or something. You're kind of mellow, so yeah. But you know, uh, it was some sort of. Um, I think I was, you know, feeling stress about something, which you know, a lot of times that's what I'm playing the guitar for. You know, kind of just stress relief chills me out. And, okay. Um, so, so, so that's what came out, yeah. So music is sort of a, a stress relief. Is is then screenwriting, is that a job then to you, screenwriting? Just kind of curious how that works. No, or I mean, is that also something you just like to do, too? I would put that, I would put that in the same category. Um, of playing music. Yeah, it's just, you know, a creative outlet. But I'm, I'm trying to see how far I can how far I can push it. So right. I'm getting to the point where I'm really trying to put things out. Okay. So. so you got something together, or you have one thing, one big project together, or do you have several? As far as the screenplay? Screen, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'm currently work, I'm working on my latest one, and I'm, I'm looking to really push it once, okay. once it's done. I'm trying to get it done by May 1st. And then heading so. out to California, Hollywood? Maybe. Okay. Very nice. Well, good luck if you go out there. Thank you. And let us know. Keep us up to date, because we'll put that on our website. Yeah. You know, get, promote you, doing, doing all sorts of stuff. Um, where, where can people find your music? SkinnyCoolKid.BandCamp.com. Uh, both the albums are on iTunes. Okay. Also, um, SoundCloud. I do have a Facebook page. Okay. All, all the above. All right. Are you looking towards, when the weather gets warmer, are you looking towards uh, playing live and, and promoting um, My Kind of Barbecue? I hope so. Okay. Yeah. Wherever, wherever I can. All right. Well, let us know where you're going to be playing so we can put it up on our site. Will do. All right. And when, if you've yes. got a video, you, you did say you, you are working on a video. Music video is on YouTube. Oh, you, it is you, on there you, already. My Kind of Barbecue should bring it up. Okay. If you have to throw in Skinny Cool Kid also. Okay. 
You can do that. Very good. Very yeah. good. All right, then. Well, Skinny Cool Kid, it's been great hanging with you. Thank you very much for having me, having me down. It's been fun. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, let's uh, go to the last song, Ashes Wide, and this is off, off of My Kind of Barbecue. Ashes Wide, what is that song about? Uh, I wrote that song after bumping into an old friend of mine who I grew up with. Okay. And we just, we hadn't seen each other in several years. And okay. We, were you, you were friends? Yep. Okay. Growing up. So we were in our, our hometown and uh, we just kind of picked up where we left off. And so. That's always cool. I think one of us ended up saying, you know, we have a special connection with people that we grew up with. Right, right. And I think I said something like, because we knew each other in our purest form. Right. You know, before the world crushed our spirits. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Um, uh, you know, we knew, we knew each other. You know, in a very pure form, right, growing right. up. So that that ended up being the first line of the song, and so I ended up making it about uh, you know friendship, people you grew up with. Oh, that's so cool. It's, so it's that's very, cool. It's, it's sentimental. It's all, it's always good to run into people that you, you like to run into. Yeah, I, I always not dre- ones that you don't. I always dread that, and, that and sucks. I've never been to a high school reunion because I, I still keep in touch with about five or six guys from high school, yeah, and no one else. That many? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're surprised, I know. Yeah. That's, <laughs> Even Mike's laughing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, keep in touch with them. And, uh, you know, there's one friend I've known since seventh grade. You know, we still keep in touch. Yeah. And uh, still, you know, we uh, holidays, we hang out and stuff like that. Uh, but I dread running into someone I haven't seen in like, you know, 20, 25 years. Because yeah. I have no patience to say like, so what have you been doing? Yeah, it's like, well, back in uh, 1997. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, where do you, where do you begin with that? Yeah, I mean, that's funny. Um, very good. All right, so uh, again, thank you so much for hanging with us. Thank you very much. Uh, want to remind everyone that uh, we do stream 24-7, nothing but the best of uh, Philadelphia area music and musicians. Uh, so check that out. And, of course, the free uh, app to download. Uh, go to the respective stores, type in YLN, download it for free, and take your local note.com with you anywhere you go. Uh, we have another vidcast, a live vidcast coming up on Monday. Wooden Hez is joining us. Uh, that they'll be. This is their second time coming into the studio to talk to us, and they're always uh, a very interesting uh, group to talk to. So check that out. That's Monday night again at seven thirty. But wrapping things up with Skinny Cool Kid uh, off the EP My Kind of Barbecue. This is called Ashes Wide on YourLocalNote.com. Long ago, we were pure. We knew for sure Just who we were And who we were Might just be What I prefer I haven't been A good friend I never called No cards were sent No cards were sent To you From me But that don't mean a thing Cause if this life ever takes you down If your body meets the ground I'll take the highway to your side In the middle of the night I'll even help spread your ashes wide Across the sea and the sky We shared our thoughts and many dreams Above the soft, confusing breeze The confusing breeze that came around told me to leave The world laughed while we tried to find ourselves Before we die, before we die I hope you know you're still a friend of mine And if this life ever takes you down your body meets the ground I'll take the highway to your side In the middle of the night I'll even help spread your ashes white Across the sea and the sky
ever find your way back home, please make sure that I'm the first to know. I'll be right here through the clearing fog with my porch light still low. There comes a time for every man to take a hit. Then play his hand, then lay his hand upon the one who he did wrong. And if this life ever takes you down, if your body meets the ground, I'll take the highway to your side in the middle of the night. I'll even help spread your ashes white. I'll even help spread your ashes white. I'll even help spread your ashes wide.